Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse, we talk about music, movies, art and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album, the sophomore album from Disclosure, titled Caracal. There's no easy way for me to do this review, and to some extent it's my own fault, because the more I think about it, the more I feel like I'm into electronic music in the weirdest way possible, and not at all conventionally. See, last year when I decided I wanted to push my comfort zone beyond trance and some of the greats like the Chemical Brothers, I started covering some weird, critically acclaimed acts that were getting that acclaim thanks to pushing boundaries. Acts like Levin Vincent and Object and Jlin and Arca, they were building a reputation for off-kilter, very difficult electronic music. And even the ones that had a closer mainstream connection like Ghost Culture or Todd Turia or Jamie XX, they're still well outside what you would typically hear on the radio. They weren't Calvin Harris or David Guetta here. So when I went back to dig into Disclosure's critically acclaimed debut record Settle from 2013, I found myself distinctly underwhelmed. Yeah, Latch had been everywhere, but as someone who had never really loved that song, finding a record that played very much to that formula and sentiment didn't really engage me all that much. Yeah, there was a certain tightness of the production that I did appreciate. Yes, man, the guest performance is very solemn. And yes, I don't don't see anything wrong with calling back to the trends of the past. Hell, I wouldn't even say the album is bad, but I was definitely baffled why this of all things became the electronic album that captivated so many people and crossed over. If it wasn't for the murderous rows of guest stars, the production was pretty sparse and the melodies weren't particularly interesting, with production that didn't do much more to enhance it. There just wasn't a lot here. But then again, I'm coming from a very weird perspective here, I admit that. I do see this having some appeal in certain settings that helped me lose my mind wasn't indeed an awesome song, especially as an album closer thanks to London Grammar. But I got to admit, Settle did not blow me away as much as I had hoped it would. And as such, when I started hearing the buzz that Caracal, the sophomore released from Disclosure with more expensive guest stars like The Weeknd and Lord, was considered a step back and a step down from Settle, I prepared myself for the worst. Did it at least manage to be passable? Well, it depends how you define passable, I guess. Is it offensive or outright grating like other albums I had the misfortune of hearing today? Uh, no, not at all. But it does confirm my suspicions about Disclosure as not nearly being as interesting as everybody said they were. It only highlights their weaknesses a lot more starkly. Again, with most dance albums, they can be hard to evaluate outside of a club environment. But interestingly, I think a closer examination of the production shows exactly where things aren't working here. And you know what? That's true across any setting, be it in the club or on the headphones. But before we get to all that, let's get the least important element out of the way first. The writing and the themes. Honestly, it'd be a stretch to say we have anything in the latter category, but Caracal does have the feel of a very confrontational album, either in the moments where relationships want to take things more seriously or outright break up, or in the aftermath that they're just trying to move on however they can. And on tracks like Hourglass, there's overlap between the two topics within the same song. It's weirdly aggressive for this sort of sound. If it wasn't for the vocal performances that kind of smooth over some of the rough edges, it can easily get a little bit obnoxious. The opener by the weekend, prime example, where he's just walloping it in the depressed moody aftermath of the night. It feels like a song that was cut from Kissland and should have stayed cut. Now that's not saying there aren't some moments that stand out in a good way lyrically. Sam Smith's work on the hindsight of Omen has grown on me a little bit since I covered it on Billboard Breakdown. Super Ego is a song about forcibly puncturing the arrogance and reclaiming empathy. That actually comes off pretty well. And I actually like the broad strokes of the album closer in self-esteem at the masterpiece. Of course, the best writing on this album comes courtesy of Lord on Magnets. Those guys are the most creative in terms of setting the scene. This guy that's seeming to leave her behind after their summer fling, and Lord trying to sustain whatever they have left by trying to go to the place of no return, whatever that might be, the place that the pretty girls don't go and they don't know about. And it's got my favorite metaphor on the album, that magnets melting in the sunlight. It's a great subtle one if you're a physics nerd like me. Of course, this album also has its low points. Miguel delivers a pretty bad turn on the dumping song Good Intentions. The whole it's not you, it's me routine never comes across sounding all that good in music. And then there's Jaded. There's stabs at EDM that feels that they've got stale, and samey and just exploiting the fresh ideas stay relevant, which I might buy coming out of nearly any other act except Disclosure here. Because here's the thing. Put aside the fact that Disclosure is not reinventing the electronic sound or remotely close to experimental, it's UK Garage blended with traces of R&B, and I'm okay with that, provided, of course, you can do this well. And I'd argue from an instrumental standpoint, Disclosure doesn't really have a lot to offer in terms of variety of melodies or synth tones. You've got a wiry beat, a thicker, more punchy bass, oily, blubbery synth lines that ebb in and out off of choppy hi-hats and snaps that occasionally get a little bit more interesting thanks to the background melody or slightly more textured percussion, like the brittle beat against the misty swell on Hourglass, or the bongos against the noisier beats on Magnets, or the tighter instability of Superego. But the progressions within the songs are often pretty minimal, with few 
few change-ups or crescendos or even melodies that evolve or do more to support the vocal lines besides the occasional fade in and out. I don't get any climax points to drive the more intense emotions off this album, and for an album that is this confrontational, that really is an issue. But you know what? That's composition, and ultimately, if you take this to the dance floor, most people will not care that the beats and melodies aren't switching up or evolving all that much. And this is where production comes in, specifically in the layering. And this issue is kind of tricky to articulate and recognize, and I only noticed it at first when I played this album on my stereo. The bass volume is so prominent in the beat that it cuts in and overlaps with the vocal line and the melodies. And yes, I tried this on my headphones too. It wasn't just the stereo. It wasn't that my bass was turned up too much. It wasn't so much support as the bass is its own entity, which can work if you structure your vocalist to ride off of that cadence. The problem is that Disclosure's guest stars are a set of R&B and neo-soul crooners who are riding against the melody instead of the beat. So when that beat starts chopping through their vocals, it feels very clunky and completely disruptive of whatever groove this album has. And that's another big problem. Maybe it's the slower tempo of most of this album, but many of these tracks don't have that whip-thin tightness that gave Settle an immediacy and deft touch that did mostly work for it. This album simultaneously is choppy as hell with its melodies, but doesn't have that tight, roiling groove to drive a lot of momentum going forward. And it gets worse when you realize how many of these vocalists would sound so much better against production that was more organic, or at least wasn't so oily and smothered in increasingly muddy background textures, most of which just flood to the forefront on the choruses and really don't flatter anybody. The worst case being the overly cluttered chorus on Omen, the synth wave on Jaded, or the oddly airless vocal production on Holding On, Willing and Able, and Masterpiece. With the exception of The weekend, not impressive next to a complete lack of tightness, and Miguel just sounding completely tuned out. Many of the vocal performers do do great work, let me stress this, but the progressions feel like they're competing with them instead of complementing them. And that's a real problem the more Disclosure moves away from traditional EDM structures and towards more pop R&B. You need to be able to work with your background vocals, not push them totally aside. Now look, I don't think this album is precisely bad, as it is just very, very average. I think the backlash that Caracal is getting from some of the critical set and some fans is a little bit overstated and overdone. But then again, I didn't think Settle was all that great either. So seeing a slight sophomore slump doesn't really surprise me in the same way. But I'm not saying this is a good album either. It's not really all that interesting. The melodies are bare bones and do not stick with me. And the lyrics really toe the line between being assertive and too confrontational for their own damn good. What this album feels like is that Disclosure got the bigger budget and the bigger stars, but they didn't really have enough in the fundamentals of their sound to use them more effectively and ended up with a record that clashes instead of compliments. So for me, it's a strong 5 out of 10, but I am recommending this if you like Disclosure in the past more than I have. They aren't for me, I recognize that, I'm okay with it, but if you've been a fan in the past, I don't know, give this a listen. You might be surprised. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Anything else I may be able to do to improve my presentation or any other albums coming out that you want me to take a look at, I will try to give them a listen. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.